And so that muck was made out of the same thing, calcium carbonate. And over time, more layers of other material got dumped on top of all that, and it got so heavy it squished that calcium carbonate rich sediment until it turned into solid rock. We call that rock limestone. Limestone is a rock composed of calcium carbonate and composed of the mineral calcite. Now, calcium carbonate has a unique property that I'm sure some of you have experimented with. It interacts with acids. I, I am sure that somebody in this room has also taken a little hydrochloric acid and a little calcium carbonate and mixed them together. No? Yes. <laughs> if you have ever eaten the medication Tums or most over-the-counter antacids, you have thrown calcium carbonate into hydrochloric acid in your stomach. However, we're not primarily interested today in hydrochloric acid, but rather carbonic acid. Carbonic acid dissolved the solid rock and created the room we're standing in. Carbonic acid is a fancy word for carbonated water, which is in your soap. So carbon dioxide can dissolve into water, just like salt or sugar, and just like oxygen, that's why fish don't suffocate. Carbon dioxide can dissolve into the water, and that makes it a weak acid that is adequate to dissolve solid rock, even though it won't hurt us. Now, when did this rock encounter carbonic acid? Well, two different times. The first time, the sea level falls, the ground rises a little bit, but stays relatively flat, and rain falls on it, water moves over it in the form of rivers, and eventually soaks into the rock and creates sinkholes and caves and springs. We call a topography or a landscape with sinkholes that put water into the ground, underground rivers that carry water through the ground, and springs that deliver the water to rivers on the surface. We call that karst topography, which is basically another way of saying a landscape with caves and stuff. Um, it comes from a region in southeastern Europe, I believe Croatia or Slovenia, where there are caves and stuff. Now, we used to have that normal classic karst uh, in this area. It's the same thing you would see down at, for example, Mammoth Cave in Kentucky, where they have a sinkhole plain, and then they have underground rivers, and old fossil underground rivers above them, and then springs on the Green River. Um, we would have had something like that here a long, long time ago, but guess what? The sea level rose again, and like a thousand feet of the other stuff got dumped on top of those original sinkholes and caves, filling them pretty much in. In pretty much all Black Hills caves, at least everyone that I've been in, you will see this material in the cave as a kind of petrified mud, a red sediment or mud you'll see in the ceiling and other places at various times. Also, that is rich in iron oxide, which is basically rust, that's why it's red, and those red as well as oranges and yellows will often be moved out of that stuff into the rock, and so that is responsible for all the nice warm colors you see in South Dakota caves. Uh, most other places you go, they're a little more gray. Okay, so now we have the caves buried. The next time that the cave encounters water is after and during the uplift of the Black Hills. So roughly 60 million years ago, we have the main uplift of the Black Hills taking place. A huge chunk of really old rock gets pushed up through all those nice flat layers that form at the bottom of the sea. And that rock you may have encountered, um, it is the rock that makes up Mount Rushmore and Black Elk Peak and the Cathedral Spires and the Needles and Little Devil's Tower and other uh, things. That rock, um, remember this rock we're standing in formed with the Inland Sea 320 to 360 million years ago. That chunk of rock that makes up the center of the Black Hills, that piece of granite, is 1.2 billion years ago. So some of the oldest rock on Earth. Um, now, what this does is it bends up also the layers of the sedimentary rocks, so they're now sticking up. So the Black Hills ends up looking like a, like a target with that core of really old granite in the middle and then the newer rings of sedimentary rock in concentric circles as you go out from that central core of granite. You'll notice if you're driving towards the Black Elk Peak, each hill you go up is a different kind of rock. Um, so all of the caves in the Black Hills are in a ring of limestone that goes around the hills. And you could say Jewel Cave is over here. There's some caves in here that probably breathe with Jewel. There's Wind Cave down here, Rushmore Cave here, Black Hills Cavern, Wonderland, and then others. Back then, there's over 400 caves in the hills. Um, there's only a few that are commercially open, but there's over 400 caves. 